recording. All right. Well, welcome everybody to our latest uh, webinar in our digital estate series, our crypto asset series. We're, we're talking all about the digital assets and planning for digital assets, whether you own them personally or whether you own them as your business. This is definitely something that is going to be uh, so, uh, good for you and, and something that will offer a lot of interesting uh, information for you. So our presenter today is Chris Huziak. He's the CEO and founder of Final Security. So Chris is a, uh, a Pittsburgh boy, number one. We really appreciate that. We like our Pittsburgh people. But he's also a, a technologist, a businessman, and an entrepreneur with more than 20 years of experience. I can appreciate entrepreneurs. We have a great heart for entrepreneurs, especially this week, which is National Small Business Week of 2022, where we're celebrating the tenacity and the innovativeness of small business owners, just like Chris. So he's a perfect example of uh, who we're celebrating in America today. So Chris is known for his ability to build innovative tech companies, create leading products, and execute forward-thinking ideas. And forward-thinking is a, a perfect way to describe what we're going to be talking about today. Prior to founding Final Security, Chris helped start Aerial Precision Medicine, a genetics company that uses cutting edge personalized medicine powered by artificial intelligence to help those with complex and chronic diseases. Chris is a proud Italian American, a family man, a hockey coach and a player and a fan of all Pittsburgh sports, probably a little short on sleep after that triple overtime fabulous win by the Pittsburgh Penguins over the New York Rangers last night. So with that, I will hand it over to Chris. Yes, it was a very exciting game last night. If we have any fellow hockey fans in here. Well, thank you, Michael, sure. for the intro. Thank you for organizing this. I think we have a very interesting topic that everyone here will like. And you may have to share the screen or switch so I can. You, you should be able to share your screen. All right, let me see here. So I just have a brief deck to help guide our conversation. And then afterwards, open the floor to questions you may have. All right. Let me know if that's not working for some reason. Yep, I'm seeing it now. Yep. yep. Is it coming through okay, everyone? I, I see it. It's great. Okay. Sorry, I'm just moving over to the chat. Okay. So to start, does anyone recognize this person? <laughs> if you do, just go ahead and uh, make some guesses in the chat box here. And yes, I agree. The Steelers had a great draft last week. I'm very excited about Kenny Pickett. All right, so this and, and may Pickens, not right? Pickett and Pickens. That's going to be a, a tandem this year, right? <laughs> I think so. So you may not recognize this person's face, but when I tell you this story, I think you'll recognize it. So this is Stefan Tomas, and he's the person who lost $250 million because he couldn't remember his password. And while we may not have a $250 million fortune sitting behind passwords, we have important information and data that we're securing with passwords. Some interesting facts to start our conversation. The average person has 100 passwords, and then every month they're locked out of at least 10 of them. So recently, how many uh, accounts did you have to do a password reset for? And it's estimated that on our devices, we have $55,000 annually in information and data. But when we start to talk about family photos, it's hard to put price tags to those items. So I have a little game for us to start. Now, this is a fake login. I've come up with a password. And just like Stefan, we have important information hiding behind passwords. So I'm gonna give everybody three guesses. And the first person to guess it, I have an Amazon gift card for you. I'm gonna give you a couple hints because this is hard. So it's 12 characters. It's based off a dictionary word. Two special characters and one capital. So I'm gonna give everybody one minute to take some guesses. I'm starting the timer right now. So go ahead and make some guesses in the chat box. We have 30 seconds, any more guesses coming in? Oh, come on, people. You got to be able to guess something. 
Oh, Steelers 22. That's a really good guess. 22 is my hockey number, my son's hockey number. I thought Steelers 22 was the number of rushing yards they'll have in the, in, during the season. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> we got 10 seconds. Any other last minute guesses? All right, so time's up. So none of those are correct, although Steelers 22, I like. This was a really hard game to play. And it highlights the importance of making sure that we organize our passwords, but also how frustrating it can be if you have no idea what this password is. Imagine being a loved one it, while you're grieving and that the loved one has just passed and attempting to get into a resource and important information and not being able to get to it. This was the password. Nothing crazy, but still very, very hard to guess. And imagine you had important information, documents, money that your loved one couldn't get to. So digital estate planning is a new idea, a new concept. And to start conversations like these, I like to pose this question. Do you know what happens to your digital life once you're gone? And if you're thinking no, just know you're not alone. Because for most people, this is the first time they've ever even considered this. But when you sit with it for a few minutes, the importance does start to hit home because there's no denying that we're living in a digital world and with that comes new risks and responsibilities. So digital estate planning is much like traditional estate planning. It's about our family and assets and making sure that they're protected and accounted for. And final security is an easy and affordable way to protect your family from burden and to ensure that your wishes and assets are found and protected. It's like a share story and this is adapted from one of our members. So Aunt Mary passed away back in 2018. But you started getting messages from Aunt Mary on Facebook with a sob story requesting money. Now, Aunt Mary didn't have a plan in place of what would happen to her social media. Now, cyber criminals these days are targeting the accounts of deceased people on Facebook and other platforms. Now, when someone dies, immediate friends and family may know of the passing, but when you get to the second and third tier of friends and relatives, they may not know. And when it's coming from a trusted source, it's very easy to fall victim to a scam. So, how can you protect your digital estate? Now, we offer four main services. So our Info Vault is a place where you can upload your documents, files, photos, usernames, and passwords to be sent to your beneficiary or your executor. Our device cleaning. Members are able to register their devices to be remotely erased. Our social and cloud clean. It's similar to the Info Vault where you're gonna supply a username and password, but one of our staff members would log in to delete or close that account on your behalf. And my final goodbye is one of our newer services where members can make a message. You can attach a short video to it to be sent to one or many different people. So we say no longer do you have to hold on to that last voicemail. Wanted to highlight a little bit more of the features of our Info Vault. This is a very powerful product. It's a central place where you can create and manage everything. So you can have documents on your machine to upload into the vault. But to make it even easier, we have a document builder and we have a templating system built into it. We were able to select from some very common use cases. It's like playing Mad Libs. You can fill in the blanks, hit save. The document's already created and added automatically to your info vault. It's also a full-fledged password manager. You're going to be able to create and manage your passwords right now and know that when the time comes, your family is going to have the most accurate information. So you don't have to manage things in multiple places. And for our crypto fans, the info vault is a powerful backup tool for your crypto portfolio, whether it's your, excuse me, uh, tokens, private keys, backup phrases. It's a way to, to ensure that you're not like Stefan and losing your important information because you couldn't remember a password or a backup phrase. I wanted to share another story with you. So Jared, a 37-year-old father, passed away. Now, Jared was the technology guru of the family, and he always had the latest and greatest phone. He had all of the family's photos on that device. And he unexpectedly passed away, and his wife, Amanda, didn't have the passcode to get into that phone. And despite her best efforts, she was not able to gain access, and she lost all of her family photos. So why does this matter? What would happen if you don't have a digital state or legacy plan? So just some things for us to consider. So let's say you have a safe in your closet with some important items, but nobody knows where the sticky note is with the code to get in. The priceless photos, just like Amanda and Jared, Without your passcode, your family can't get to them. Your social, financial, and other accounts, they're inaccessible without your login information. And nowadays, cyber criminals are targeting the deceased. 
Now, according to ARP, it may take up to six months for the government, banks, and other institutions to officially share and recognize death records. And when funeral announcements are widely available online, it's become a treasure trove for criminals these days. Now, we've covered a lot in a short time. Just some other things to think about, uh, other aspects of our digital state. Your Venmo and other cash transferring applications, you could have money sitting in those. Safes, recipes, this is a big one for me. I've been working on my pizza recipe for 20 years. And I want to make sure that my family will have access to that when the time comes. Genealogy records, bank accounts, wills, photos, subscription services in your email accounts. We could make a list that would go on for days. Our digital states are huge and they're growing exponentially every day. Now, we've partnered with FIFIC Law to give you a special uh, rate. And all you have to do is enter this code. It's 10% off our life plan, which is a one-time payment of, uh, it comes down to 359 then you can find out more information on their website or just using this code here. That was uh, the deck. I just wanted to uh, give you a brief intro to what your digital state is, how you can protect it, and wanted to open it up for questions. Hi, right, Chris. And while people are thinking of a few questions, um, I know from an estate planning standpoint and estate administration standpoint, what is um, gonna become a big challenge as we go on is just knowing where somebody has assets, right? Uh, there are not too many families that I do estate planning for where um, they have a list of all of their assets and account numbers and everything written down on a piece of paper that they share with their family members. Um, you know, there's all different kinds of family situations out there. And, you know, not all parents think that their kids are responsible enough to have that information available uh, to them. Some people are just pretty secretive, right? Um, and it used to be that if you just waited long enough, you would skid all of the uh, bank statements and you would know where everybody had assets. But that's just not the way of the world anymore these days. Everything is moving online. There are no more paper statements of any kind. It's all online accounts. And your only access to them is your, is your username and password, uh, basically, and your account number. People are going to pass away and have assets and their family isn't going to know where the assets are. So something like uh, your product, I think, is super important, even if it's just uh, a place where somebody can go to say, this is what mom or dad had, this is what mom, grandma or grandpa had um, in the way of assets, then I, I, I know what's out there. Um, um, I think it's a, it's, it's a pretty scary future in that regard where people pass away and haven't written any of this stuff down, and all of a sudden nobody knows where any, they had assets. That, that, that's a crazy thing. It's about protecting your digital life now, but also for your family then. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, they, you can't, uh, you can't, as I understand it with crypto, right? There's no uh, customer service line that you can call if you lose your, your, your access codes, right? That's absolutely right. That's one of the biggest negatives to that technology. Right, no one entered number you can call, no um, password reset link that you can get to say, hey, you know, send me my, my, um, my access codes to my Bitcoin account. It's just gone, right? Just gone. That's right. So all, of, all of that time that you work um, and work hard and save and script and save and do all of those types of things, you know, and you think that you have wealth or some assets that you want to pass on to your family, but if you've not taken the steps to actually tell them where it is and how to get it, it's worth nothing. It's really literally worth nothing. So... Do we have any questions yes. that we can answer for anybody? You can uh, unmute and ask, just fire away. Jerry is asking, do you use rolling encryption? Yes, we have keys that are rollover and we uh, tell our clients that we offer bank rate encryption, it's end-to-end -end encryption. So at every stage, all data is encrypted and our keys shift. That's a good question. Knowledgeable question, it sounds like to me. Very much so. Yeah. What other questions can, can we ask? How many apps do each of you think that you have? You look on your phone, count how many you have. You know, what would happen to all of those if you, if you pass away? You know, we do see, uh, more frequently, you're seeing news items where um, uh, social media accounts of folks are being hacked and then used, right? The Gilbert Gottfried was a very recent example of that, where somebody hacked his account and started posting, his Twitter account, I believe it was, and started posting some not so nice things on his Twitter account in his name. Uh, Herman Cain was another relatively recent 
um, example of that where he had passed away. And then a week or two after he had passed away, all of a sudden he's continuing to tweet into the political discourse. And his uh, children had taken over his Twitter account and just decided that they would keep um, uh, talking, right? As if Herman were actually alive. Maybe many people didn't realize that he had passed away. So you have that kind of a thing going on. And it, it, I, I think your story about somebody hacking into a loved one's a Facebook account and asking somebody for money is very poignant, right? That's a, a classic phishing, uh, a classic phishing type of a technique, right? Where you pose as somebody else asking somebody for money. So looks like we have another question here. Hi, can you talk a little bit about how one, I'm watching this and with Legal Shield, I'm thinking about how we can integrate this with what we're already doing with the will and ID shield. And the other thing is there are tools that we're using with crypto. So how do those tools integrate with um, this particular service? I'll take the front end of that question and maybe Chris can take the back end of it if that's okay. And I think that's a great question. Thanks Marlene for the question. I think the, the whole topic of digital assets is something that um, if I were a sales associate, I would be paying attention to because it, it, you're going to see it more and more. And it's not just for people that have crypto. Although I will tell you that the number of people that have crypt, crypto, crypt, uh, uh, cryptocurrency, right? Doubled in from 2020 to 2021. It's going to continue to expand, right? Notwithstanding what um, uh, who's the guy at Berkshire Hathaway says, you know he's he's sort of uh, dumping cold water on on Bitcoin. But um, anyway, it's doubling. There are going to be more and more people out there. You get credit cards that are going to give you crypto as for your rewards. You know, yeah, uh, Warren Buffett. Thank you very much, uh, Chris, for for that for that assistance as my dementia starts setting in early. But you're going to have this, and, and so. What I think that it's going to do, if I were a sales associate, it would create a sense of urgency, an increased sense of urgency for people to get their estate planning in order. We offer a fantastic product to allow people to get their estate planning done. And digital asset planning is part of estate planning, right? They really need to be talking to their attorneys about digital estate planning. They should be talking about their financial advisors about their digital you know, assets and, and what happens um, to their digital assets. If they can't access them anymore while they're alive, maybe it's because they're incapacitated or, or something like that, or what happens after they die. But Chris, do you want to handle the back end of that question too, how this sort of integrates? Yes, thank you. Product? So I'm not familiar with what tool Legal Shield's using for crypto, but in terms of how we can integrate, we have a number of different options that are available. We have our digital estate agent program, which is what Michael and I are using. It's a turnkey partnership where we set you up with a uh, unique code, and that code can be sent out to your clients. It, you have a portal where you're able to track all your sales in real time, and all you need to do is hand that code. During registration, the member or the client would enter in that code, and the commissions automatically associated with your sale, and they get a discount. And commissions are paid automatically in a, every business or the last business day of every month. And however, we do have custom partnerships and we're in talks with numerous people and uh, other ways that we can provide, whether it's discount codes or other uh, volume bulk discount of pricing, just we can have a conversation and discuss how it best fits your flow and your customers. Uh, just to be clear, because uh, FIFIC does the best educational marketing for Legal Shield, but do all of the law firms have access to this or is it just Fithic Law that we refer through? We're gonna be introducing Chris to some of our other partners around the country here real soon. So we hope that it is becoming more and more available. Paul's asking, will the replay of this be available? Yes, yes. Um, it'll be on our YouTube channel for Fithic Law Group. So if you just search Fithic Law on YouTube, you will find it probably, it'll post if today's Wednesday, it'll probably post by Friday, I would say. So keep an eye out there for it. Um, one other thing, <clears throat> um, the last time you discussed this topic, um, I sat down and I listed for myself all of the assets that I have everywhere because I'm single and solo and it was a really long list. And I was thinking about how to 
give instruction and organize and all of that. So based on your experience so far with folks, um, like me, if I were to drop dead today, what would be the ideal scenario where things just go really smoothly for everybody? Where I'm using your service, I got my will. Can you just paint a picture of what that looks like without any hiccups? Because I know they're all the horror stories, but I just want to know like what it looks like. Like you haven't mentioned say eBay or um, Amazon, for example, or other other portals where we have money sitting. So can you just paint a picture of what it's supposed to look like? Yeah, I'll, I'll so, be happy to take a stab at, at that. And then Chris and I can sort of tag team on that, but you're, I'll just say Marlene, you're, you're starting in the right place, right? To take, realize A, that you have digital assets, right? And they, they're they very, it's a, broad, it's a broad category of assets that you have. Um, if anybody is unsure exactly what their digital assets are, you know, you can go to my website. Um, I believe there's an infographic on there that gives you an idea of what your digital assets are. And there's also an inventory that you can download for free that will help you think about and organize um, all of your digital assets. And I think as you go through them, you're going to realize there are, are quite a few. There are quite a few. But then the next step of that is deciding what happens to them after you pass away. And that can be a little bit challenging. And that's really I think where, where Chris's product comes comes into play, if you want to sort of pick up from there. Sure. The happy path would be that you are planning ahead of time and being proactive uh, using a service like mine, where the Info Vault is flexible to whether it's eBay or a service we don't even know about yet. It can accommodate everything and anything. So it doesn't have to be a particular service like Facebook or Instagram. It could be any website, and the Info Vault would be able to protect you. And so when the time comes, we have uh, multiple uh, phase process that happens where uh, there's a, a automation in the front end of it and then human interaction where our team's contacting the client, their beneficiary, executor with certain security codes in there as well before any services are executed. On, upon confirmation of uh, the passing, then the services would then be executed. Portals are open to the executor to be able to access the information that you had stored in your vault. Okay, so let me throw some things at you. Uh, sure. For example, um, in one instance, I have an account overseas, for example, in, in Panama and another country, and banking there is very strict. So whenever I access the bank account there, um, there are codes that I have to use with the app and they're also emailed to me. So I'm like, oh my God, if a family member had to access this, how would they get that? Another scenario is like with my Roth IRA account. Um, I know that's with the beneficiary, but if I'm buying uh, crypto in my Roth, how do you navigate that, that scenario? So I was thinking through all the different scenarios uh, but aside from real estate, you know, where of course it's your deed, but I was thinking of all these digital scenarios where when I access those accounts, I get passwords and there's two-way encryption. So I'm just wondering like, what would a family member have to have to deal with you guys for those things? So it depends on the scenario where there could be backup codes. So a lot of times where there's multi-factor authentication, you could store the backup codes and that's a way to access those resources if they have access to the actual device themselves where you're passing along the passcode to get into the device with the app. So there's a couple of different ways to approach it and it just depends on the scenario, but the tool is flexible enough to adapt to and provide the means to be able to access those resources, but it's an individual case for each so, so, different service. Okay. So someone coming to you guys with, like, if I'm referring someone, I should actually have them inventory what they have and think about how they're set up for each of those scenarios. And then when they come to you, you'll be work, able to work through each scenario so that when they're done, um, they could sleep at night knowing that no matter what it is, the family can access everything when they drop dead. Absolutely. That's exactly the correct thought process. Yeah, okay. it, it does start It does start with the inventory. I mean, you really have to do that. And then figuring out what you want to have happen after the fact. Because these are, you know, let's say that you're a gig worker or that you are a, um, that you're an, you're an online entrepreneur and you've got an Etsy store or you're selling on eBay or Amazon 
you know, you have to be thinking about what you want to have happen with all of these purely digital assets or digital businesses and what's going to go on. So you have to give some instructions to somebody, right? It's more than just giving them access to the username and passcode. So, um, you know, if you want to think a little bit about what that looks like, um, you can also go to my website. Um, in the estate planning area, there's a digital asset planning page where you can download a digital asset instruction letter that gives you an idea of the types of things that you might want to tell your family, either directly or through uh, Chris's product, about what you want to have happen to uh, to these these accounts. So it's it's a lot it's a lot to think about. It really it it really is um, because it's you got a lot of stuff out there. Yeah, and the other thing so, is, if um, you have a falling out with a family member, how easy it is, is it to change stuff? <laughs> is it like one password, or you got to change a whole bunch of things uh, if if there's an issue there, or a spouse even, or an ex spouse? You're able to freely change who the beneficiary or executive is on your account. It's just going into the account portion of your portal and changing it. it it's that easy. In terms of what. The inventory, the tool comes with a tracker. So when you log into your account, it's check boxes and helps guide you through the process and think about all the various different aspects of your digital estate that may not be obvious at front, but when you look at the tool and you see, oh, I do have some of those and you can go through an inventory, add it to your vault and then check it off. I'm gonna okay. go to Jim and Jimmy next year. He's been very patiently waiting with a question, but I'll just say, that if you want to get a good idea of what you're leaving for your family members, if you don't take care of the stuff, right, there's a digital asset guide on my website that will tell you what each of these social media accounts and other digital types of accounts like Venmo and things of that nature, the things that you that your executor or that your family will have to do to manage each and every one of these assets individually. And I think you'll very quickly find how overwhelming it is and realize that uh, Chris's pro product for its price it tr offers a tremendous value. But, so Jimmy, what, what can we answer for you? Okay, first of all, can you hear me okay? I sure can. Okay. I was I, how are you sure. feeling? You were under the weather recently, right? Yes. I'm about 80% of the covers. You know, not 100% yet, but getting there. Getting there. Yeah, Good. getting there. And yeah, Marlene had some excellent questions. Some of them I had even thought about. And I, my question, I think might have already been addressed, but let's say that, for example, somebody um, has a uh, service uh, of course, and like, for example, that person's like that, the, the example of Jared um, that you sh uh, shared earlier, all his family knows is that, you know, they come up across um, something that shows that they have an um, account with financial security, they don't know anything else. How would it, a family member be able to um, access the whatever, because uh, yeah, they have to absolutely no idea what um, it is other than, let's say, they come across a piece of paper that has the, um, you know, the name of the, the you know, financial security. So how would the family member you access the, you know, you know or whatever assets the, is inside there if the loved one did not leave any uh, message? So when a member signs up, you select and enter a beneficiary executor during the account creation process. And then that person will be notified via email that they've been selected and some other instructional information. When the time comes and we verify that a member has passed, they'll receive some more communications, but we've also talked to them beforehand too. So they know that these next steps will be happening. So they're aware throughout the entire process. It's not something that would come out of left field so from the beginning to the end, they know that they're selected as the beneficiary for that member. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Thank you. I'm trying to answer the questions here in the chat. So sorry, everybody, yeah. for my delay. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, from Marlene. Sure. Um, if, if that's okay. That's fine. Uh, the other thing is I've been using RoboForm for like over 15 years, and it has literally hundreds of passwords and logins. So if you already are using a service or the one in ID Shield, how would that interface with um, final security? How do we overcome that hurdle? 
Well, there's no integration to date, but if that's a big need that we can have a discussion offline and see how we can help you. Because, you know, a lot of people already have tools they're using and then to get into your service for your key benefit, I'm like, gee, now I'm going to have two different things or can they work smoothly together? Um, that's all That's all I could come up with. I had one other thing, but if I remember it, I'll get back on. I think that one of the most important takeaways is this is just something that you're going to help people um, understand that they need to be thinking about, right? And it, it's going to only get bigger as an issue for them um, about how, what they're going to do with their digital assets and how they're going to leave them and, and providing instructions for folks. And how does that integrate with their estate plan you know, itself? It may end up being their estate plan, quite frankly, because um, we're, I think, in a, a time in, in the very near future, um, you're only going to have digital currency. You know, I was at uh, PF Chang's recently, and you know when it came time to pay the bill, uh, they gave me the bill with a QR code, and I had to scan it and pay with like Apple Pay. Well, number one, I had forgotten my cell phone at my office. And number two, I don't have Apple Pay set up. So I think you know it's an example of where the world is going, right? Where the world is going, and all of this stuff is going to be in the cloud. It's going to be a digital asset. And um, traditional estate planning tools are not going to be completely sufficient to, uh, to take care of all of this for the needs that people have. So it's, it's just, uh, okay. you can be I on the front end of this. Yeah. Okay. So I, I'm just learning about what it's like when you die. Uh, and I heard that you need to have like a death certificate and have multiple copies to give to a whole bunch of parties. So are we able, are we able to help? with that process and make it simpler for folks. And then my second question to that is, um, are, is it just a US thing or is this a global service that you're offering or is it just the US and Canada? Where, where can the service be used? Uh, US based right now, although we're planning for globalization and we do not help in the death certificate process yet. Uh, Jerry is asking a question in the chat. How does the IRS validate asset values for tax purposes? So typically for most people, the death tax or inheritance tax that you're going to pay is at the state level rather than the federal level, unless you've got, you know, five or six million dollar, you know, estate that, that, is, that is taxable. Um, it's going to be date of death values that, it, that are provided or certified by whatever the banking institution is typically for those types of accounts. But yeah, you're right. It's... Um, you know, it's <laughs> digital assets may evade some of those taxes um, if you're able to transfer money without a lot of accountability that's out there. And I think that that's why some people are pretty interested in crypto because they're thinking that it, it, it shouldn't evade uh, taxing at death. Certainly it is a taxable asset, but whether the government can catch up with it, you know, is, is, a, is a whole nother, you know, a whole nother issue out there. But you have all of these other there are other considerations. It's not just money, of course. It's your pictures, like Chris had said, your valuable pictures online, your memories, um, you know, what your online legacy is going to be, you know, after the fact. There are some estimates that by 2100, right, uh, which none of us will be around to see probably, but it's not that far off into the future. There will be as many uh, Facebook accounts associated with living people as there are dead people. So we're going to have all of these um, online personas that are out there they could potentially be hacked, hijacked, used for nefarious purposes, um, but just floating around out there with, with no, um, you know, with no particular plan. So Chris, is it that you're helping us to um, store, leave stuff to be stored forever? Or is it you're helping us to put things in order, get people access to whatever, and then delete things that we don't want people to have access to? Are you helping with that? final process there? So it's a mixture of everything. So it is organizing and making sure that your loved ones have access to what you want them to. But it's also, if you want to erase your digital footprint, that's a large component of this as well. And that's where the device wiping and the deleting of the accounts. So it's twofold. One, I want people to have access to my information and data, but in parallel, it's also, I want to delete and erase so it's more of like the legal uh, estate planning side and uh, more of the identity protection side. It's the erasing.
Any other questions? So it's real. So like, I'm, I mean, you've given me so many more things to think about. This is exciting. Get your head spin, read, right? <laughs> yes, it does. Because uh, like right now from myself, I'm, my family hinted that I should digitize all the photos and stuff that I have for like 50 years of travel. So nobody wants my paper pictures. And I was thinking, man, if something happened to me, nobody wants to come and clean up my house. So I'm thinking if you're able to digi digitize things, should I spend my time digitizing things that I want to leave behind? So I'm just thinking through, you know, is it that we should go the way of digitization of things we want to leave behind and just get rid of all the physical things and then you guys will store it forever if somebody finds it of value? Is that where we're going with this? Or is there a limit to the amount of storage? That's my last question for you, Chris. Uh, there is a, currently a limit. It's 10 gigabytes right now for the info vault. So it's not for mass storage yet, but we are going to be increasing those limits. So it's not a place to dump every single photo, but we have worked with members that have a large, large photo base to have it, whether it's in Google Photos. So that's a common one. So you have the service somewhere else. We're going to provide access to get to them. So you could store and back up your photos right in the system, or we can provide the means and method to get over to where the large storage repository is. So there's a number of different ways to handle it. Did you say this Everybody was a one-time fee, sorry. a lifetime fee, or a one-time fee, or an annual fee? I've, I've... So yeah. We have two main services. The one's a one-time payment, but we also offer a subscription service. It's a monthly payment. And Jimmy is asking, is the pricing you gave per person or is it for the family? The price that we cover was per person. Sorry, I'm trying to get to all the different messages in the chat, so I apologize if I'm being slow. <laughs> I'm trying to go back up through them. That's okay. Jerry is asking, what barriers do you have to skilled hackers? We run tests every month, uh, penetration tests internally and externally. It's one of the things in the forefront of our minds. I, personally, my background, I come from healthcare, so I'm well-versed in being able to instruct my team on how to secure sensitive data. As most of my life, that's what I've been doing. Yeah, I'll tell you that um, I had a conversation recently with a high-level big insurance company that they're scared of uh, crypto, I mean, uh, cyber threats. And insurance carriers may be limiting the type of coverage that they're going to offer in the future on that. So um, it's something that if you can get it, get it now, because I think as the dollar value of these threats grow, and it's only going to grow, and, and, and everything is going into the digital, the digital world, right? Insurance carriers are going to be uh, a little bit more skittish about providing any type of coverage for you. So um, it's definitely something to be thinking about. Now, it's a now issue, I think, before it gets fully developed. So you guys are all on the front end. I appreciate you um, chiming in and asking such great questions. You know, the detailed stuff is really what you have to ask because uh, once you start unpacking that, you realize, oh boy, this is an issue that I gotta be dealing with, right? Well, There's a lot here. Oh, I just wanna Sorry, say Melinda, thank you. I just want to say thank you, and I, I'm, you prompted me to think of a whole bunch of things because I have assets overseas, I got real estate, all sorts of, I have like a zillion bank accounts. So I think we should do it for ourselves personally to go through the process, and then I think we could be of more value to people that way, having gone through it ourselves, just like having your Legal Shield memberships. I'm just yeah. throwing that out to everybody. Yeah, thank it you. may, it may, thank you. And it may also, it's food for thought, right? It may make you think twice about the complexity of your own um, asset portfolio. And, um, you know, it, it's something that you understand. It, it's, you know, is less of a hassle for you to, to handle it, but what are you leaving for somebody else who may not have the desire, the time, or the skill set to handle your um, broad array of, of assets that are gonna end up all being digital you know, you may want to simplify your life a little bit. I know that in the times that I've had to assist family members with their finances, one of the first things that I did was A, put an inventory together, but B, consolidated their assets because it was just too much for me to manage. 
10 different bank accounts and three different investment accounts and, you know, four different IRA accounts. It's just, it's too much. And, you know, I try to consolidate it all into kind of one place just to make life a little bit easier. So um, that's part of the, that's part of this process too, is, is to think about what you're leaving for your spouse or for your kids. If you're not the one with the hands on the wheel, so to speak, are they going to be able to deal with it? So and it's, it, it's a nice thing to have one access code that you have to get, which is to your final security account. And then everything's there. That, that's a tremendous peace of mind um, that, that if you're going to create all of this wealth and complexity from an estate plan, um, try to make it as simple as possible for your family to access. Because if it isn't accessible, if they don't know about it, it's not worth anything. And you've kind of wasted your, all of your time doing that stuff. Nobody's into wasting their time or their efforts. So... Any final, any final questions for Chris before we sign off? Uh, just a comment for me, even though I said it was my last. Um, I have an, an IRA custodian, a self-directed IRA custodian, and I think they'd be really great partners for what you guys are doing because they're holding a lot of assets for people. And um, it's just a no-brainer to partner up with them. because and, and, and a lot of them are getting into crypto too to put into your IRA. So that's a no-brainer partner there. Thank you, I'll look into that. Yeah, keep, a, keep an eye out for, there's a bunch of legislation pending right now about IRAs, the SECURE Act, and then there's the SECURE Act 2.0 that's been proposed. So there's gonna be some rulemaking coming down about that here real soon. It's gonna be finalized and it's going to impact um, withdrawals from IRAs, age ranges, how much you can take out, uh, how long your beneficiaries can keep their money in IRAs. And it may cause you to rethink a little bit about, especially crypto in IRAs. Um, so keep, keep, keep an eye out for that topic as well. That's going to get more complicated uh, real soon, I think. So Jeff White here, can you uh, give a physician or a healthcare organization access to your uh, living will, medical directors? As long as they're entered into the info vault, yes. There's nothing that we can prohibit being entered into the vault, as long as it's legal. So I could have the hospital in which I'm getting urgent care in an ER access a directive to say do oh, or do them not. directly? Yeah. No. Right now, it would be for the member only. If you were there with them, That'd be one thing, but there's not third-party access to date. If I'm comatose, I'm not going to do very well at communicating that. So I guess that's not going to work. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend that. You you definitely want to have your your healthcare power of attorney, your advanced directive, whatever it is. You right. need to give it to your doctor, yeah. right? That it needs to be readily available. You don't want to have any barriers between uh, your healthcare provider and that stuff. So, absolutely. Chris, any final this is words? More proactive, a more of a proactive tool, Jerry. At that point, I would, if your orders were unfair beforehand, just like Michael was saying, tying into hospital systems like that's a whole different avenue of uh, regulations and compliance. And however, we are HIPAA compliant, we're end-to-end -end encryption. We offer the level of compliances that would be necessary for those conversations, but that's not something that we're doing at this time. It, it could, so- yeah, How do they get a hold of you, Chris? I was about to put my direct email here in the chat because I'm sure that after we disconnect here, the questions will start to come up, especially after we've all uh, departed. So feel free to email me. I'd be happy to continue conversations here offline, answer any more questions you may have. It's a big topic and it's growing every day. So when we hang up today and tomorrow, there could be a whole new service that pops up and it changes this conversation completely. So the power of final is having that single secure place to be able to manage your digital life now and for your family in the future. And thanks again, Michael, for putting this yeah. together and I appreciate everybody's time. Thank you everybody for, for attending. Joining. Appreciate it. Keep in, you know, subscribe to us on Eventbrite. We will be continuing to talk about digital assets and cryptocurrency. Chris may in fact appear again at some point if we can convince him to come on board again. So uh, keep, keep, keep tuned and we'll, we'll keep talking about um, this info. And I'll make sure that Chris's contact information is in the post attendee uh, email that goes out to everybody so that you all get that information as well. Okay. Thanks, Thank everybody. Have a great day. You too. Thank you.